Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and today we'll learn to install and program an example motor drive, in this case, an Omron 3G 3JX AE004 for direct operation. Our objective is to learn to install, reset the Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive to factory defaults, and program it for direct operation. This lecture is predicated on the assumption that viewers watch both the introduction of motor drives and example motor drive Omron 3G 3JX AE004 lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, since we're dealing with this particular manufacturer's parameter programming process and navigation within it, it may help to download the associated datasheet and or user manual. First, we need to install the Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive. As indicated in the standard connection diagram, we need to include a circuit breaker as a disconnection means between it and the power supply. The T1, T2, and T3 output of the circuit breaker go into the L1, L2, and L3 primary inputs of the motor drive. The black, red, and blue wires serve this purpose. Additionally note the motor drive has been grounded using the green wire. Note the T1, T2, and T3 primary output of the motor drive go into the L1, L2, and L3 primary inputs of the motor. The black, red, and blue wires serve this purpose. For direct manual operation, this is really all we need to do right now. When we power on the device, note the display lights up, as do several indicator LEDs. Assuming we're powering the motor drive up from factory default conditions with no errors, you should notice the following. The data display is displaying the output frequency monitor. As can be expected, we're observing zero hertz. Note the hertz LED is lit up to accompany the numerical data displayed on the data display with the appropriate units of frequency. Note the amp unit LED is dark. The power LED is lit up, indicating that the motor drive is powered up. The alarm LED is dark, indicating the motor drive is not experiencing an error. If there was an error, an associated error code would be displayed on the data display. An example would be error E014. Error E014, according to the user's manual, means a ground fault trip. This is a non-resettable error that requires a technician shutting off the power and checking the wiring. The run LED is dark, indicating that the motor drive is not actively accelerating, running, or decelerating a motor. The program LED is dark, indicating the parameters of the motor drive are not being actively programmed or changed. All seems well. Let's program this drive for direct manual operation. Navigation within a particular manufacturer's decision tree takes some knowledge and practice, and even the most experienced and talented of technicians often require the assistance of a cheat sheet. Consider the parameter transition flowchart for the Omron 3G 3JX AE004. Are you going to remember this? No. No, you are not. This being said, it's in the manual and you can look it up if you need to. By the way, if you've got a copy of the manual available, you should probably pull it out now since I'm going to offer you opportunities to navigate to different parameters. Like I said earlier, navigation takes practice and what better practice than for me to blindfold you, stuff you in the trunk of my car, drive way out in the woods, drop you off and tell you to find your way home. This particular drive has a huge list of parameters listed in the manual, which I divide into several different classes, namely monitor or display functions preceded by a D, basic functions preceded by an F, extended functions preceded by an A, protection and initialization functions preceded by a B, communication functions preceded by a C, and motor settings preceded by an H. One could use the tangled web of the parameter transition flowchart or navigate by brute force by using the increment and decrement keys through this boundless sea of parameters. However, neither of these seem attractive options. Luckily, this manufacturer offers a means of quick parameter selection, which I'll detail in a moment. Given the initial start state, one can press mode to see what parameter is actively being displayed. As can be expected, we're displaying D001. The output frequency monitor as indicated in the parameter list in the user's manual. If you want to navigate to the fin temperature monitor, D018, press the increment key until the display reads D018 and then press mode again to display the current temperature reading. 
Neat, huh? Not only is this an inexpensive motor drive, it's a really expensive thermometer. Press the mode key again to return to the parameters list. All right, here's your first challenge. Use the parameters list in the user's manual to find the monitor or display function that monitors the voltage of the DC link. Hint, it's not too far away and you could probably use the brute force method to navigate using the increment and decrement keys. To navigate to parameter entries further than a dozen or so clicks away, luckily this manufacturer offers a means of quick parameter selection. To quickly navigate to a distant parameter, press both increment and decrement keys simultaneously. The first digit will blink, and then an operator can increment or decrement the first digit as desired, and thus press enter. This moves you to a second digit, and so on. Once all four digits are entered, you are magically transported to the desired entry, skipping all the toil and heartache customarily associated with this journey. Let's use the quick parameter selection method to navigate to the initialization and protection parameter B084. Those following along in the user manual note that this entry correlates to probably the most important parameter in the whole user's manual, notably the ability to clear any previous errors and reset this drive to factory default conditions. On the odd chance someone, i.e. your lazy lab partner, has totally dorked up your motor drive, the B084 parameter will allow you to forget this chapter of your life and begin anew. Never forget how to reset a motor drive to its factory default condition. You never know what is being handed to you. The factory default at least allows you a known starting condition. Starting in D001 mode, I simultaneously press increment and decrement. The first digit blinks. I increment or decrement to B, then press enter. The second digit blinks. I increment or decrement to zero, then press enter. The third digit blinks. I increment or decrement to eight, then press enter. The fourth and final digit blinks. I increment or decrement to four, then press enter. Once the display stops blinking, I'm in parameter B084. I press mode again to read the current entry. Note the drive is currently in state zero zero and the program LED is lit, indicating that I can change this entry. If you want to both clear any previous errors and initialize this drive to the factory default, I increment this parameter to 0, 02. Since clearing errors and returning the drive to factory defaults is kind of a momentous occasion not to be undertaken lightly, the means of doing so is a little bit more complicated than entering other entries. Believe me, this procedure takes practice, and the moment you get good at it, you're going to forget it. Luckily enough, it's in the manual. Listen to the whole procedure first before attempting it, since several things must happen in a specific sequence. To reset this drive to factory defaults and clear it, one needs to press and hold both mode and decrement keys. Then one presses stop reset. The display kind of wigs out. Release stop reset first, then release the simultaneously held mode and decrement keys. If you've been successful in resetting and clearing the drive, you'll be returned to the initial default D001 parameter. Now we need to program this drive to recognize what type of motor it will be driving. One does so by entering the motor nameplate into the motor drive using the motor parameters preceded by an H, notably H003, motor capacity selection, and H004, motor pole number selection. For this example, I'm making use of a three-phase AC squirrel cage induction motor with a quarter horsepower output, roughly 200 watts. The motor has a nominal speed of 1725, which corresponds to a synchronous speed of 1800 RPM. This means the motor has two pole pairs per phase, or four poles per phase. Navigating to the parameter H003, motor capacity, we find the entry at the factory default of 0.4 kilowatts, or 400 watts. One decrements to 0.2 kilowatts, or 200 watts, and presses enter to save this value. Navigating to parameter H004, motor pole number selection, we find the entry at the factory default 4. This matches our given motor, so no change is warranted. Alright, here's your next challenge. Given a motor with the following nameplate data, 
determine the entries for H003 motor capacity and H004 motor pole number selection. For basic direct operation with our initial example motor, we've performed the steps necessary to program this motor drive. There are a number of other factory default settings that I've purposely skipped, particularly maximum frequency and acceleration and deceleration times and patterns. We'll examine these parameters in later lectures. We'll operate this motor with parameter D001, the output frequency monitor being displayed. To directly operate this motor, an operator would position the frequency adjustment knob all the way counterclockwise, corresponding to minimum excitation frequency and pressing run. Note the run LED indicates the motor is in operation, but it's not moving. As an operator repositions the frequency adjustment knob clockwise, the motor drive increases applied frequency. The motor accelerates and speed stabilizes. When an operator pegs the frequency adjustment knob all the way clockwise, corresponding to the default maximum frequency of 60 Hz, the motor accelerates to an excitation frequency of 60 Hz and then stabilizes. When an operator dials the frequency adjustment knob halfway, the motor decelerates to this new speed and stabilizes. When an operator presses stop, the motor decelerates and turns off. Note the run LED turns off after the controlled deceleration period has ended. When an operator presses run when the frequency adjustment knob is halfway, the motor drive increases the applied frequency to roughly 30-ish hertz. The motor accelerates and speed stabilizes. When an operator presses stop, the motor decelerates and turns off. Note the run LED turns off after the controlled deceleration period is ended. When the operator presses run when the frequency adjustment knob is pegged fully clockwise, the motor drive increases applied frequency to 60 Hz. The motor accelerates and speed stabilizes. When an operator presses stop, the motor decelerates and turns off. Note the run LED turns off after the controlled deceleration period has ended. While the motor drives running, one can navigate and display various operational parameters. We'll initiate operation with parameter D001, the output frequency monitor being displayed. As previously, the motor accelerates and eventually speed stabilizes. While in operation, when we navigate to parameter D002, output current monitor, we find the unloaded motor is drawing roughly 1.2 amps. All right, here's your next challenge. Use the parameter list in the user's manual to interpret the data displayed when I navigate to parameter D013. The motor drive at 60 Hz and the motor stabilized at the no load speed. The motor drive is saying 209. What does the data in parameter D013 mean? As a further challenge, consider the following behavior. When I press stop, the motor drive reduces excitation frequency Note that the data in parameter D013 also decreases as the motor decelerates and comes to a rest. Similarly, when I press run and the motor drive increases excitation frequency during the acceleration period, note that the data in parameter D013 also increases as the motor accelerates and stabilizes at full speed. What does this behavior have to say about the data in parameter D013 and the excitation frequency during acceleration and deceleration periods? For the curious, another whole lecture on this behavior awaits. Until then, this concludes the installation and initial programming of an Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive for basic direct manual operation. We learned to install the drive, interpret the status of the drive using both indicator LEDs and the data display during operation and programming, navigate to specific parameters, change parameters, reset the drive to factory defaults and clear errors, enter motor capacity and pole number selection data, and directly operate the drive. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.